May this message be God's message. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, this reading will be from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, uh, verses 11 to 32, the end of the chapter. It's uh, the legendary story of the prodigal son. Jesus went on to say, There once was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to him, Father, give me my share of the property now. So the man divided his property between his two sons. After a few days, the younger son sold his part of the property and left home with the money. He went to a country far away where he wasted his money in reckless living. He spent everything he had. Then a severe famine spread over the country, and he was left without a thing. So he went to work for one of the citizens of the country who sent him out to his farm to take care of the pigs. He wished he could fill himself with the bean pods the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything to eat. At last he came to his senses and said, All my father's hired workers have more than they can eat, and here I am about to starve. I will get up and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. So he got up and started back to his father. He was still a long way from his home when his father saw him. His heart was filled with pity, and he ran and threw his arms around his son and kissed him. Father, the son said, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father called his servants. Hurry, he said, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. Then go and get the prize calf and kill it. Let us celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. And so the feasting began. In the meantime, the older son was out in the field. On his way back, he came close to the house. He heard the music and dancing, so he called one of the servants and asked him, What is going on? Your brother has come back home, the servant answered, and your father has killed the prize calf because he got him back safe and sound. The older brother was so angry that he could not go into the house. His father came out to beg him to come in, but he spoke back to his father. Look, all these years I have worked for you like a slave and have never disobeyed you. I have never disobeyed your orders. What have you given me, not even a goat, for me to have a feast with my friends? But this son of yours wasted all your property on prostitutes, and when he comes back home, you kill the prize calf for him. My son, the father answered, you are always here with me, and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be happy, because your brother was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. Okay. Not just lost and found physically. He says he was dead and was alive again. That means spiritually dead, but now he's spiritually alive. It means he came to his senses. He turned himself around. Uh, he became more godly. You know, from this experience of poverty, he became a better person. So, the father wants to celebrate that as well as his... Uh, coming home safe and sound physically. Now, the brother had his guilt too. Granted, he was the better person than the younger son at first, but uh, he too uh, had his rebellious spirit. Uh, he was working hard for him, hoping to get something out of it. Uh, like a goat to feast with his friends. But you see, although the younger son was the worst of the two to start with, he actually turned around and became the better person ahead of the older son. 
you know, his rough experience uh, made him learn his lesson. So, he actually deserved this feast more than the older son in that sense. You know, I've been there. I've strayed from God. And uh, during that, I uh, suffered uh, a lot. I, had ish I won't get into specifics, but uh, it was scary at times. And I came back to God, and things turned around. And I became a better, more humble person because of it. Now, you don't necessarily have to experience tragedy to uh, turn your life around and uh, become a better person. And I hope that's not the way it happens. Uh, maybe that is what will take. Uh, that one reason I do uh, this ministry is uh, hoping that... Uh, you can learn from it and not go down the same path as the prodigal son in order to find the Lord. But of course, everything that happens is in God's hands. May this message be a blessing to you, and to God be the glory. Amen.